Hi, this is Kevin of Map Practical. Today we're going to take a look at making a simple topo map in ArcGIS. So what I've got here is just a DEM displaying and I just went to Geo Community website and downloaded that. It's a 1 to 24,000 so it represents one of the USGS 7.5 topo maps. So one of the first things that I would do <clears throat> is I'd come up here to my spatial analysis toolbar we'll zoom in, take a look at that again and then go to surface analysis and then hill shade we get a little pop-up and the input surface of course is going to be the DEM and then the azimuth and altitude will just leave the defaults but that's just has to do with the angle of the sun uh, we'll leave all these other defaults of course save it where we want it to go I'm not going to run it though we can save a little time uh, just by having it already run and you'll get a hill shade that looks something like this now this hill shade's got a couple of issues it's a little dark a little pixelated so if I double click on the hill shade in the table of contents then you'll get the layer properties for that and what I want to do to make it a little bit lighter is down here on the stretch I'll just change that to standard deviations 3 hit apply you'll see it kind of lighten up good in the display tab the resample I'll take that and put it down bilinear interpolation and then say OK and that's gonna clean it up a little bit so it's not so pixelated alright now it's looking good now we want to put a hypsometric tint over the top of it now this DEM came in meters and since in America we generally do our topo uh, maps in feet we're going to convert it. So over here in the Arc Tool box, um, if we scroll down and under the Spatial Analysis Tools, I can find the Times tool. Double click on that and get it going. And then uh, the first raster is going to be my original DEM. And then I'm going to put a constant value here of, what's it going to be, uh, 3.281. And that's going to convert my meters to feet. Of course, save it to your geo database and let it run. Alright, and so once you've got that nice shaded uh, DEM in feet and I turn it on and you can see now we've got a nice color. Now it's not going to come in like that so what you'll have to do is you'll double click on it <coughs> in your display tab. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to set my transparency to 45 or 50 somewhere around there and then over on the symbology tab under color ramp I just uh, went and picked a nice green to uh, bright white color. If you right click in here and say graphic view uncheck, then you actually can see the names of them and you can see, you can scroll down. There's all these different color ramps you can use uh, or you can go back and uh, click graphic view and see the actual colors of all the ramps that you can use. Um, we're going to go with the same standard deviations and such and then when you click OK you get this nice hypsometric tit. Now that's stretched over the whole value. Well suppose that you wanted to actually classify it based on elevation. Well I made another copy of the DEM and it's over here and turn that on and you'll see it. There we go. I'm just going to double click on it to get to its table of uh, contents and then the layer properties. Oops, a little bit too far. Um, and what we did here instead of having it stretch is we went to classified and then we went to this classify button and in there you can see all different kinds of statistics. So my minimum elevation is 1400 feet or so, uh, a maximum of over 10,000. I just did a quick little math and realized if I wanted uh, 1000 foot separations on my tinting then I would need 9 classes. Or actually it looks like there's 11 here. Um, and then you would go down and you, so you set your classes here. I believe it's 9 though. And then you're going to go down to these break values and if you just click on one here, you can turn it to 2,000 and then click on the next one, call it 3,000 and you would work your way on down until you classified all your breaks. Hit cancel. And we go back out here, hit cancel and you can see that now I have a nice hypsometric tint that actually shows elevation change based on where the color changes. So every time the color ramp changes, that is, uh, indicates another 1,000 feet of elevation gain. All right. So now we want to put contour lines on this map. So what we would do again is go up to Spatial Analysis, zoom in again here, and Surface Analysis Contour. And I want to have contour intervals that are at 250 feet, and I'm going to leave my base contour as 0, my Z factor is 1, and of course save it to my normal place. Say OK. And when you run that what you're going to get is contours that look like this. Now the standard way that we um, symbolize contours is generally to have uh, smaller thinner lines for the intervals and then on uh, every 
thousand feet or so to have an index contour and that's exactly what I'm going to recreate here. So I'm going to double click on the contour over here in the table of contents. Again go to its layer properties and then under symbology instead of features I'm going to go to categories. I'm going to change this to contour and then I'm going to move down and go to add values and here's a list of all the possible contour values. If I hold down my control key I'm just going to select my thousand foot values. It's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I believe I still have 10, and say 10, and say OK, and you'll see that those values have been added. Now if I select my top one, hold my shift and select the bottom, now I have them all selected. I'm going to right click and say group values. <coughs> Now I have all of my 1,000 foot intervals in one um, group and then all the other values in another. If I just double click on this little symbol here, it brings up my symbol selector. And I'm going to scroll down here and I know that there's a contour line already pre-styled. Select that and then I'm going to do the same for my group of 1,000 foot intervals. But this time I'm going to select the contour index style and that's going to be a bigger brown line. Now when I hit OK, you're going to see that we have contour lines that have index contours at 1,000 foot and then every 250 foot interval is a smaller brown line and then another index contour which is a larger brown line at the 1,000 foot mark. So that's your basics for making a nice topo map. Uh, I'm going to come back and show you how to do the labeling of contours in the next video. Alright, hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Thank you.